Project Accounting Enhancements in Acumatica 2017 R2. In this video, we'll look at the simplified billing structure that is now available with Acumatica projects. Simplified billing allows you to quickly create and modify projects. It greatly simplifies the setup and maintenance because allocation steps are no longer required. This is very useful for certain scenarios, but you can use existing scenarios for advanced revenue recognition and complex work in progress accounting. There's two primary types of billing rules that have been introduced, time and materials and progress billing. Time and materials simply takes inbound costs, re-rates them or assigns them a different uh, price, and then allows you to create a simplified invoice in one step. Progress billing allows you to take a fixed project amount and bill it in increments as your project gets completed. Let's demonstrate this process with a simplified time and materials project. In this project, we're only going to have one timesheet, which is going to be Jane Doe submitting some regular and OT hours. Notice that the ratio of the rates is different for her hours versus the hours that we're going to bill the client. Let's see how all this works. So we're going to go in and we're going to create a project. We only need to pick a billing rule. In this case, remember, we don't need an allocation rule. We're going to set this up on, on demand, and we're not going to use the pro forma option for this one. And I create a couple of tasks, activate my tasks, activate my project, hit save, and I'm ready to go. Now for this project, notice we didn't enter a budget. That's because we're going to go for a very simple process. Okay, so now that we've got everything set up, let's go log in as Jane Doe and enter our timesheet. The timesheet process, as well as the approval process, has not changed. And just like that, I've entered a timesheet and submitted it. Now I need to go to my appropriate person to approve this. And just like that, we've gone in and submitted our timesheet. Now the last step is to go create our bill. So, using this simplified process, I simply go to the project and run project billing. The bill automatically appears for me. I can then review it, and if needed, release the bill if everything is okay. If I return to my project, you'll notice that I get the expected results. I can drill into my costs and see the transactions, and see the different hours that came in, as well as the appropriate rates. And then I can also see the revenue side. So let's take a quick look behind the scenes at what made this happen and why it was so easy. It starts with the notion of a billing rule. My billing rule has, can have different steps, just like your allocations could before. These steps gather information and create a direct bill. So I grab, well, I grab travel costs here and multiply it by a constant. I could have also used an attribute on the project level if I want to set it at each project. I grab the labor costs and use this new thing called at price, which is uh, available. The at price means take the price from the non-stock item. So let's see the non-stock items that we set up. We set up the junior consultant at 80 an hour and the junior consultant overtime at $100 per hour. On the employee side, you can see that Jane Doe is linked to the junior consultant. And then, if she enters an earning type of OT, it overrides that and provides the overtime consulting rate. Now back to our billing rule, you'll also notice that we can mix and match if we need to. So I can continue to use the at rate capability. You'll also notice several billing options at the bottom. Uh, I can aggregate transactions if I want to. I can specify specific formulas to determine what the invoice description is, as well as the line and the transaction descriptions as well. So just to review, in shortly under a minute, I was able to create a project, submit a timesheet, and create an accurate client bill for a simplified project of time and materials. In the next project, we'll look at a fixed price or progress billing situation. In this case, we'll have a contract for $10,000. $1,000 will be billed for materials. When we sign the contract, we're going to collect a $2,000 payment and then when the materials are delivered, we're going to collect an additional 1,000. When we finish the work, we'll collect the remaining amount of the contract, 
which will be $8,000. So let's see how this looks in the software. To save time, we've copied and pasted a project. Items of note. The revenue budget is set at the task and item level. This will help us order specific items to drive the percentage of completion for our tasks. As before, we don't need to specify an allocation rule. We have two tasks, the main task, which is going to be our contract amount, as well as our materials. In the revenue amount, we've set up our project amount. In here, you can see we have one contract for $10,000. Our computers is a non-stock item that's been set up that we're going to have two of them at $500 each for $1,000. Under our cost budget, we have to add the computers. The reason is we need to check the auto completion percentage in order to drive the completion for the second task. To set this up, we'll create a unit rate of 250 and we'll budget a quantity of two. Returning to our task, we'll make, go in and make sure that our completion percentage is based on the quantity that we receive. Now we're ready to activate our project. First we activate the tasks and then we activate our project. The first thing we want to do is go and set the completed percentage for our contract to 20. This is the 20% initial payment that we'll be requesting. When we run project billing, we easily get an invoice that is set up for that initial amount. We'll go ahead and release that. As expected, when we return to the project, we have income and an invoice on our project. The next step is to go into the purchase orders. We're going to go create a purchase order for our two computers. And we're going to link this line item to our project. When we receive our goods, you'll see that the non-stock item, you'll see that the items are linked automatically to our project and our project task. Therefore, when we release that, we'll get an inventory transaction for our project and we'll also automatically create the bill. I've got my bill set up to automatically release, so that's going to save us some time in terms of entering the vendor bill. Returning to our project, we can now go to the cost budget and see the impact. This project task has been completed because we've received our two computers. Now, when I run project billing, I expect to get the line item that shows the billing for my computers. And finally, as the last step in the process, I go back to my project when it's complete, and I set my completed percentage to 100. As you can see, there's now a pending invoice amount of $8,000, which means the next time I run project billing, I'll get the final bill for my $8,000. And as expected, we end up with a total amount on our project of $11,000 of revenue plus our expenses for our two computers. That concludes the feature demonstration of our simplified project billing. Thank you for watching. <laughs>